and uh, the, the crowd rode me onto victory, Kevin Fittichieri, he was a tough striker. I was dying to get a stand up with him every time I got close, he was jumping to try and take me down. So I had to bide my time, try and get back on my feet and, and then get top of him because I knew he was trying to turn it into a grapple match. Even though on paper he's a striker and I say that as soon as I hit him, he would look to get it to the deck and what the fuck did the French guy do? Try to get it to the deck. But, mm. The, the first thing you said when you come out of the cage was never again at that weight class. That weight class thing, one thing I fucked it, so. <laughs> Fucking, and it wasn't even a proper weight class, it was 140 pounds, I still had theoretically another four pounds to go to make the bantam weight. The thought's been in there for three or four years, that thought's way back now, fuck that. And how? Featherweight's better watch out. How nice and was I'm still it to the get best the fucking fighter in Scotland. How nice was it to get a 15 minute run out there tonight? Uh, fuck the 15 minutes. I was dying to get him out there early, you know. Who the fuck wants to be there for 15 minutes when they offered me the fight and they said you're the main event? I said, no, I'm doing five rounds. I'll tell you that right now, I'm not doing five rounds. They said, okay, you can do three. And I didn't even want to do three, you know. I was just dying to get in there and get a job done and get the fuck. But hey, sometimes it takes longer than usual. Longer than it took last time the hydro, but sometimes you just got to grind them out. And in in the run up to the fight, you mentioned to me you wasn't looking to recreate the UFC experience of walking out into the mm -hmm. hydro. Can you just talk to us about the experience of walking out the second time and what, how different was it? Uh, it was totally different, and they fucked the song up. They played a total slow version, you know. And uh, as soon as I heard the song, I was pissed off. I thought, fuck it, I'm just walking down the cage. Jude Samuels at the front, slow the fuck down. And I'm like, fucking hell. And then the shitty fucking lyrics come in, it was slow as fuck, they're better when they're ramped up and you've got the pipe band behind it. So as soon as the, 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 the lyrics come in, the crowd kicked up and I was like, alright, I might take another couple of seconds, but I was just dying to get in there and get my hands on them. And again, it maybe wasn't a fucking crowd like it was here in the UFC, but for a small country we can fight like fucking for a small country we can make a lot of noise. Fuck knows how many they were in there, but fuck I heard them, believe me I heard them, it was fucking amazing. Yeah, there's a lot of noise from the Scots in mm -hmm. the Kulmain and such a, an important main event, not just for you, but for ACB as yeah. well, being their first UK card. You told me you didn't have, you know, you didn't feel too much emotion coming into this. A fight is a fight yeah. for you, but, you know, when you were expecting him to be more in the striking exchanges and he decided he didn't want that and he wanted to take it down, how frustrating was that? Because, you know, it seemed like he, it, he didn't actually want to advance too much on the floor, he was just happy to sit there. Exactly. Yeah. And then same in the feet, you know, he looked like he was wanting to fucking fight, he was showing wee shitty jabs. As soon as I stepped in, he went, he went on the single leg. And, and, and right I could have I could have stuffed it, but right away I was just trying to hop off and hit him. I was just trying to make a fight here, you know, and I knew he was fucking going to take me down. And I, when, I, when I seen the matchups and I told you I get offered a lot of different people, I thought he was going to be the guy, I thought he was the man to stand there and bang, you know. And, 140 pounds, there was nobody going to fucking rock me and my feet in there at 140. And I knew when I hit him, I think I hit him with an uppercut or a right hook. And I knew as soon as I hit him, he was like, he didn't want me to do it. I was, I was, you know, but fuck, he's coming to Scotland for fans. Nobody even knows him, he's a dangerous fucking fighter. And you're in front of there, he's got to do what you've got to do. He's trying to survive in there, you know. And even get in there against somebody for Scotland, never mind fucking me. It's a hard job, so he had, he, I suppose he had to do what he had to do. I was dying to get a fucking stand up and I never got it, but it'll be another time. Is, is that an important thing looking forward about potential matchups? Having a guy like uh, when you fought Redmond in the UFC, a guy who will stand there and will trade and you put on an amazing fight, is that something you're looking more for now, now that you're going to be in the 145 division officially? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I fucking love to fight, that's what I love, you know. And, and then UFC, I was getting fucking put with striking monsters, as you've seen in Zagreb, I got a loss of split decision. The one before that, I got a fucking wrestling fucking monster. And, you know, I was just wasn't getting the matchups. I wanted to, wanted to stand there and trade. If anybody seen my career when I fought down in Newcastle against Guy Carroll Fawcett, you know, fucking we stood there for 15 minutes and banged each other, and it was great. And I, for a second, honestly, thought in my mind, I thought he's going to stand here and trade. And, he just kept on the, the single leg, you know. But and when it went to the announcer at the end, was there any doubt in your mind that you'd not won that fight? Uh, no. And then for a fucking split second, I seen his corner team telling him to put his hands up. And I was thinking, fuck, Zagre will all over again here, you know what I mean? And I gave it everything in the last round, you know. I took him down, I was hitting him, I was staying busy on top, trying to keep busy hitting him and punching him. But there was no elbows in ACB. And I didn't even know that until I was driving in the car and I was watching the feed and the, the commentator mentioned it. Oh, there's no elbows in ACB. And I was like, Sake, first I knew about that, you know. So when you're on the ground with someone 
and the referee's telling you to stay busy, as soon as you come up to strike, they're popping up to their feet. I mean, you're not fighting 10 years ago where people didn't know how to get to their feet. Everybody knows how to get to their feet. I and mean, you give people that space when you come up with punches, they pop up with the elbows, you can stay on top of them and grind them, but you don't get that chance here. So it was very hard to stay busy on the deck with strikes and punches. You had to turn it in a grappling match, basically, if you're on the deck, you know. And even the crowd were booing it, it was fucking shit, but. What can you do? Did um, fighting on home soil make it more intimidating or did that familiar, familiarity allow you to relax a little bit more? More intimidating for him, who the fuck's coming to Scotland, yeah. from Scotland and feeling intimidated? Terrible question, but I'm sure the French guy hated it. Billy, me going to France in front of his fans be intimidating for me, you know, for, for him. Brad, you've had uh, Dean early back in your corner. Yeah, he's always in my corner, you know. Dean's, uh, Dean's been building a, a, a new team. Phenomenal. Years ago. Phenomenal. I know the guys that had a massive boost to you back training. Yeah. What's it meant to you to come back and train and score and do your thing? <coughs> I mean, I'm always trying to grip this. That's always my gym, you know. It's yep. just unfortunate I travel all over the fucking world now and can't spend as long a time when I get there. So, yep. so what's it, what the problem is now is when I come home and I've been away for fucking 10, 15 weeks, I've got my girlfriend in this year, <laughs> and I've got the grip house in this fucking year, so at the time I need to weigh up who's going to give me more shit. Dean Riley or my girlfriend, you owns a lot of the time my girlfriend wins and I fucking go and sit in the house with her. But if it was for me, I would be in that grip house every day. And, and during the day, you know, I'm lucky enough to make a living for this sport now. I can rock into a grip house and train during the day, but you forget, guys have still got jobs and they don't come in tonight. night. I've got my girlfriend back home and she gets in for her work, so it's back to fucking yeah. sunny break for me, so as much as I'd love to be there for 9 o'clock in the morning at night, yep. at night, I can only be there for 9 in the morning to fucking 5 at night, you know, so it's great, it feels great, it's always been my number one home, and, you know, I've been uh, Dan Hope in my corner as well, for yep. a long friend of mine, I've cornered him a few times and it was great, I could have him in the other night, and <coughs> I got up, up, up in the changing room before we walked out, you know, Dan's English, but I take him under there as a Scottish guy, he's always been there. And he says, I says, I can't wait to get in here, and I'm fucking buzzing again here. And he says, I can't wait to get down there and cheer with you. First thing I say is, I can't wait to hear your voice, you know, because you're in there, it gets lonely. And when you hear familiar voices, especially guys for your team, so it's like, that's how you come up, and it's just, it's good. And maybe you guys don't hear it, but I'm in there and I hear Dan's English, Scottish voice, it's fucking, it is good to hear. Good question. Any, any, uh, any up and coming finals you've played with at the grip that you should be keeping an eye on? Uh, there's fucking loads, you know, there's a wee guy, Reese, uh, yeah, doing the and Dean's been fucking coaching him. So when, I, when Dean used to fight and we used to spar, when I see Reese sparring and fighting and sport, like watching him and Dean, you know, it's fucking great. And it's good to see the, the attributes coming for Dean and, and the other guys. You've got wee girl Fee there as well. She's fucking awesome, hard boyfriend. I don't even know his name, I call him a different name every day. I do yeah, really know his name, but I'm Kieran, I call him Callum, I call him fucking Colin. Anything just to fucking annoy him, but he's another great new fighter. Uh, Dan Hope's another, you know, he's three wins in a row now. He's, he's monstering people, the guy, uh, Ryan Scott won tonight, Dan beat him a few fights back as well. So he's fighting monsters and he's been fighting monsters since he came up. And he's in a three fight win streak in Scotland, so uh, UFC's coming to Scotland next year. So. I hope Dan gets another run under his belt and gets on that card as well. And aside from the few visible scratches and bumps and stuff, any injuries going in or anything you picked Nothing up? Nothing going in, thank fuck uh, the weight, that was the only thing, but that fucker hit me with a knee for hell in the, the last round that put my stroller plexus into the rose head, I think. Nobody up there to throw it back down because they wouldn't sell tickets that high, but <laughs> he fucking hit me with a knee. And <coughs> I was fucking coughing my guts up when I go back to the medicals. Uh, so hopefully there's not too much damage there. And get the crispy cream in the morning, get 12 day bastards in my car. How hard was the weight cut up? And like you having uh, best man at best friend's wedding, things like that, isn't it? The fucker, the, the weight cut, I'm fucking, I really pride myself of being mentally strong, so if you fucking put a number in front of me and then put a check in this hand and say, can you make that weight? I'm going to fucking make that weight. It's not, it's not hard. It's the lead up to the fucking weight cut. You've got to prepare, prepare your body to drop those extra five, six pounds that I would normally. Last week I was the best fucking man at my friend's wedding and everybody knows when you get married in Scotland the groom stays at your fucking house the night before so we hired a Porsche for the day I thought, I thought great I'll hire my Porsche, I can't obviously go, can't go and have a meal hire a Porsche and we'll, we'll kick about and that for the night and he's a car loving guy and I thought it'd be great an hour into fucking kicking around he says oh, I might just go to the pub you fancy dropping me off I say no you'll not be in the mood for it say, I'll drop you off in the bar and then I'll go and kick about in the car and I'll come back for you Pick him up at half 11, jumps in with a fucking 12 inch picture, check the Cora, 
<laughs> Got you some pecora, I know you're on a diet. I say, I fucking pecora, I say, you're fucking not fucking you at this car. I say, of course I can't even eat a chicken pecora, so I drove up the home and I said, you're eating that in the fucking garage. You're not even bringing it into the house, you know, I'm fucking starving, I'm eating sadly's for fucking dinner. Greek yogurt at night for three weeks. He says, you're eating that in the garage. So he sat in the garage, yeah, he's chicken pecora and his pizza. I sat and ate my Greek yogurt in the, in the bedroom. And, uh, Good. Next again day, I had to go to the wedding and sit there, best man, I had to do the speech, and then we got the dinner in front of me. And fucking hell, so that's the, that's the shit, it's hard, you know, it's not no the task in hand, it's, it's other normal life when you when you put yourself in that place with normal people, it's hard to go inside with that. When I take myself out and I run my own show, it's easy, you know, but I've got to help my girlfriend and my wee cat, they had two weeks of fucking hell. First Scott in the UFC, first Scott to fight on the Glasgow card of the SSE Hydro, first Scott to headline ACB here at the SSE Hydro in Glasgow. Rob Whiteford's making the history here for Scottish MMA. What's next for you in the history books and further progressing this sport in this country? I mean, I've said it before, Robert Whiteford doesn't fuck about. <laughs> and I set records, I set them big. Uh, somebody give me another record to fucking break and I'll do it, you know, bring the UFC back to Glasgow and I'll be back in there knocking people out. If not, bring more of the fucking Russians on.